10 years after NATO first engaged in Afghanistan, you've said that the war is unwinnable. Um, Pakistan has suffered devastation as a result of that engagement. Um, what prognosis do you have after the British and American pullout in 2014? Um, I think they would not have achieved anything. Uh, uh, I still don't even know what they wanted to achieve. If, there, if the objective was to have a puppet government in Afghanistan, which would be you know, a, a pro-US puppet government, I think they will fail. Uh, you know, someone has to work out trillions of dollars spent on this war, uh, approximately a million people dead, uh, two countries devastated, Ira Iraq and Afghanistan, and a third one, Pakistan, brought on its knees. Um, someone has to assess w w w what, what, uh, you know, what was the objective of this war. I mean, for 19 criminals to have committed the act they did in New York or, uh, uh, or in, in the U.S., uh, what a price to pay for that. And is the world a safer place? The big question is, is it safe now? I mean, can you just put down all your security? Can you uh, unwind the security operators everywhere in the world? No, you can't. Given the US increasing reliance on drones, do you think that Pakistanis can ever accept that that is a legitimate part of the war on terror? It is completely illegitimate. Much worse, it's totally counterproductive. You just have to look at the record of, uh, of the number of drone attacks and work out what they have achieved. Has the violence gone down? Are there less terrorists today? Is the country, country getting less radicalized? Um, whoever is killed is, is replaced. I, I, I would be very surprised if even 80% of those who, who, who are killed uh, are militants. Most of the time they are uh, poor people, uh, innocent civilians killed. Uh, there is no way of verification who dies, because where, when the when when the, where, where the uh, drones attack where, or where they where they fire these rockets, there's no presence down there of anyone to verify who's dead. And then in Pakistan, always the news item: the bodies were charred beyond recognition, or they were blown apart so no one could recognize who's, who died. So, so. Uh, I mean, apart from the fact that it's immoral, it's against all humanitarian laws where suspects, relations, wives, kids, neighbors are, are eliminated. Uh, it's totally counterproductive. The American ambassador in, uh, in, in Afghanistan, Ann Patterson, in WikiLeaks, she's, she, she is saying it's counterproductive. How damaging was the U.S. operation against Osama bin Laden in violation of Pakistani sovereignty? I think, um, you know, Obama might, it might have uh, come as a sort of a victory, you know, and it was doubted as such in, in, in the West. The most wanted man died. But in, in the overall scheme of things, did it change anything? Um, did it uh, um, endure... Uh, India, the U.S. to the people uh, in, in the Muslim world, or Pakistan specifically, uh, um, did, it ha uh, did, did it help in winning the battle of hearts and minds? I think from the Pakistani point of view, there was extreme anger, but mainly directed our own government. But then also at the U.S., that here is an ally, an ally who has lost 35,000 people dead, $70 billion lost to the economy, three and a half million people internally displaced. And in the end, our ally did not trust our own security forces to take him out. Uh, it, it just, uh, I, I don't think people here understand the impact it had in Pakistan. How much do you think that the war on terror has damaged the relationship between the federally administered tribal areas and Islamabad? What it has done is it's led to a revolution, a, a rebellion. There's, there's a civil war going on in our tribal areas. These people, and you're talking about in the tribal areas, between 800,000 to 1 million armed men. Every man is, is, a, is a warrior, carries a gun, knows how to fire a weapon. 
They're very hardy people. It's a rugged, mountainous country. It's, it's the ultimate warrior race. Now, by sending the army into the tribal areas on behest of the Americans, uh, uh, by, by General Musharraf, we, we created the Pakistani Taliban. It took two years of military operation and drone attacks to create the Pakistan Taliban from 2004 to 2006. And now there are about 30 Taliban groups operating. Basically, the foot soldiers are being provided by our people in our tribal areas. Whenever there's collateral damage, revenge being an integral part of their genes, their character, they go over to the other side and they become Taliban. So the more military operations, the more collateral damage, the, the, the stronger the militants become. You witnessed the Soviet engagement in Afghanistan. Do you think that NATO is regarded any differently to the way that the Soviet army was regarded in 1989, 10 years after its own engagement in the country? Well, the US might convince its own people that they are the good guys and the Soviets were the bad guys. But for people of Afghanistan, they are, it's foreign occupation. And they have always resisted for your foreign occupation throughout their history. Now, this is where, you know, you, from Alexander downwards, every conqueror has been resisted. The British, of all, had fought three of one wars, and all of them resulted in a, a, not in victory. Uh, so, uh, so to expect that the U.S. is now going to be, after 10 years of occupation, that they'll be popular. And remember, here's Hamid Karzai, a U.S. puppet, calling it foreign occupation now. He is talking against the night raids. Given the mistakes that have been made by the U.S. in the last 10 years, what advice would you give Washington for the region in the future? Uh, as Einstein said, the definition of madness is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. There is no military solution. There has to be a political solution. But you can't have a political solution when you're trying to have dialogue and you're bombing the same people. You've got to have a ceasefire. Then start talking. And rather than tell Pakistan to go after the Haqqani network, Haqqani network is part of Taliban. They Haqqani accepts Mullah Omar as his leader. So rather than um, asking Pakistan army now to uh, chase more shadows, because what will happen is they'll attack, they'll disappear in the mountains, and they'll probably emerge in the cities. But what will happen is Pakistan will lose any leverage at all it has with the uh, Haqqanis. So rather than that, they should actually, you, uh, Pakistan should use that influence in trying to help uh, uh, them to come on the negotiating table. The only, there is only, there's no military solution. I mean, this is madness what's going on. The U.S. is fighting a population. They are not fighting some ideology, which is what they're trying to tell the people here. Afghans have never been involved in any international terrorism. And uh, the U.S.'s own admission, uh, Pentagon, according to Pentagon, there are barely 100 Al-Qaeda left. So what are they fighting this? Uh, what is this war all about? There are massive civilian casualties. The people of Afghanistan are suffering. Pakistan is imploding thanks to this war. So th there has to be a change of strategy. Peace has to be given a chance.